The stiffness method for analysis of pin jointed frames is a powerful technique in structural engineering. It involves breaking down a truss structure into individual elements and joints. Each element is represented by a stiffness matrix, which depends on its material properties and geometry. By assembling these matrices, we form a global stiffness matrix for the entire truss. Applying boundary conditions and solving linear equations, we determine nodal displacements. These displacements help us calculate member forces, providing valuable insights for engineering design and analysis. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. This is a pin jointed framework. We have to work out displacements at E and determine the forces in the members B, E and C, E. The distances are given. For all members, A, E is given. So this is a pin jointed structure, which means that it will only have axial forces, tension or compression. It will not have any moment and shear forces. A is the area and E is Young's modulus. So if you are using steel members, Young's modulus will be 210 GPA and area will be cross-sectional areas. A, C, B and D have a pin or simple or hinge support. It means that they will not have any kind of displacements. Only joint E is free to move, free to translate. So joint E will have translation in X direction and translation in Y direction because this is a pin jointed structure. Rotation, we are not considering rotation at all because there are no moments. So that's why moments are related to rotations. So this makes our problem a bit easier. And the reason is that at point E, we will just have two degrees of freedom, which means we will just find two displacements. Joints are numbered. We have to number the elements or members and we have to give arrow. You will choose that arrow on arbitrary basis. A to E, I have named this member as small a. From C to E, I have named this member as C. From B to E, the name of member is B. And from D to E, the name of member is D. This is the direction of global axis. Matrices will follow the same sign convention. X is positive rightwards and Y is positive downwards. This is my assumption. You could say that, okay, X is positive rightwards and Y is positive upwards. You will still get the same answers. So uh, is that yes. um, is that Pythagoras just to get them lengths for the, for yes. the members? Yes, I was going to say that. Use Pythagoras theorem to work out the length of the members because you are given the horizontal dimensions, you are given vertical dimensions. From that, you can work out this 4.125, 4.24 and 3.16. You have to do three things. One is give arrows. Second is give member names. And third is determine these lengths through Pythagoras theorem. We will use formula for element stiffness matrix, which is this one. The displacement at E will be calculated first. DE will have displacement in X and Y direction. A defined global coordinate system taking joint E as origin as indicated by X and Y in this figure. Also define the local coordinate system of individual members. These are indicated by these arrows. Now, how do we put these arrows? I have just taken it arbitrarily over here. For B, it is upwards. That means that its local coordinate system is like this. X will be positive. Its Y is going to be negative because it is against the direction of global axis. And here again, X will be leftwards, Y will be upwards, both an X and Y will be negative. And here X will be negative, Y will be positive. Now, first we have to obtain the stiffness matrix. I will start from joint A. So joint A is connected between A and E. I will mark the locations. So I will have locations A, 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 E, E, A and E, E. So these are these locations. And I have five joints in total. So that's why I'm writing five forces. I have five displacements as well. I will go to member B. Member B is connected with B and E. So I will mark the locations BB, BE, EB and EE. So this is BB, BE, EB, EE. Member C. Member C is connected with C and E. And I will mark the locations CC, CE, EC and EE. So CC, CE, EC, EE. And finally, I have member D, which is connected with DD, DE, ED, EE. 
And here you can see that there is only one joint which is common to all these joints, which, which is indicated in this stiffness matrix. You can see that at this joint E, the stiffness matrix from all members is added together. So this is how we assemble global stiffness matrix. So now joint A, B and C, these are all pin supports. Joint A is a pin support, so it means row one and column one will go away. When we multiply with the matrix, it will be zero in any way. So it, it will be better to just take it out. Joint B is a simple support as well. Row two and column two will disappear. Joint C is a, a pin support as well. So row C and column C will disappear. Joint D is a pin support as well. Fourth row and fourth column will disappear. Joint E on the other hand is not a support. So that's why that will remain. Our final equation will be this one, which is now easier to solve because E has got X and Y component, and then it will be a two by two matrix, which is in my opinion, easier to solve. Now our next task is to find out these KA, KB, KC, and KD. These are element stiffness matrices. The first thing is that we will use this formula we will use this formula kn now length of each member is calculated by pythagoras theorem as i mentioned ka kb kc kd these are stiffness matrices for members a b and c and d correspondingly and these are expressed in global coordinate system like this for member a first of all i will determine its local coordinates because the arrow is pointing upwards my local coordinate system will be like this x and y because I have to use this formula sine and cos, so that's why I will determine sine and cos. Length of member is known, AE is given to us. Sine theta is equal to opposite or vertical dimension divided by hypotenuse. So vertical dimension is one, hypotenuse is 4.12. The negative at vertical direction means that the vertical component of the local coordinate system is going upwards, which is against the global coordinate system. That's why it's negative. And on the other hand, cos theta, horizontal dimension of member A, horizontal dimension of member A is four divided by hypotenuse. The horizontal component of this local coordinate system is going leftwards, which is against the global axis direction, which means that has to be negative as well. If you put this formula in this AE over L, AE is given, L is the length of the member, which is 4.12, cos squared theta, so if you square this value, you will get 0.943 times sine theta cos theta. If you multiply these two values, you get 0 0.23, 0 0.23. And then finally, we have sine square theta with 0 0.59. Now I'm applying 4.12 inside the matrix. So I, I'm getting this 150 into 10 raised 3 common. The reason is that because this is common across all the members. Any doubt, any question up to this point, I want you to really understand it properly. The numbers inside the matrix, is that just the ratio of, that's basically sine theta, right? Number inside the matrix, I have used this formula, okay? We will apply the same logic to member B. I have to determine its direction of local and global axis. Vertical will be against the direction of global axis, which is positive downward. Vertical is going to be negative. Horizontal is in the same direction as global axis direction. I got these directions because of this arrow. If arrow was other way around, the directions will be reversed. And now we have to determine sine theta and cos theta. So what is sine theta for, for this? Sine theta is vertical over hypotenuse. What is vertical here for member P? Three meters. Three over five. Hypotenuse is five. The fact that my vertical is against the direction of global axis, so it will be negative. Cos theta will be horizontal dimension divided by adjacent divided by hypotenuse. What is horizontal dimension for member B? Four meters. Four meters. This is how I determine sine theta and cos theta. This is AE. AE is given over L. Length of this member is five meter. Into bracket cos square theta. Cos is this one. So four over five, if you square it, you will get 0.64, three divided by five times four divided by five, you will get 0.48 and that is negative. So cos square theta minus sine theta cos theta minus sine theta cos theta sine square theta. This is the formula. Sine is three over five, three over five, if you square it, you will get 0.36. Divide each element inside the matrix by five, you will get this answer.
I will move to member C now. For member C, first of all, determine the direction of local axis. So leftwards and downwards. So, so Y will be positive, X will be negative. Sine theta will be vertical over hypotenuse. So what is vertical here for member C? One, One what is hypotenuse? 3.16. 3.16. So 1 over 3.16. 1 has to be positive or negative? Positive. Positive, because this is going in the same direction as y is going in the same direction as global and cos theta will be horizontal dimension divided by hypotenuse. what is horizontal dimension three meters three meters divided by hypotenuse is 3.16 and because this is going against the x-axis direction so that has to be negative so that's the reason you have cos as negative and sine as positive length of the member is 3.16 ae is given cos square theta is square of this and this is sine theta cos theta this is giving you negative earlier i think here i said minus sine theta cos theta minus is not in the formula the formula is cos square theta sine theta cos theta sine theta cos theta and sine square theta remember d x will be negative and y will be negative as well sine theta will be 3 over hypotenuse 4.24 cos theta will be 3 over hypotenuse and that will be negative as well and once you have these values simply a e over l l is 4.34 cos square theta square of this value 3 over 4.24.5 the multiplication of sine and cos that is 0.5 sine square theta at the end now why did we work out this ka kb kc and kd the reason is that because the global equation was pe is equal to k ka kb kc and kd and into bracket de so this was our global equation adding up all those values starting from here take first term of this 0.229 plus 0.128 plus 0.285 plus 0.118 i'm getting 0.76 in the same way add up all these corresponding elements within the matrices to add these stiffness matrices 115 to 10 to 3 is common so that's why it is kept common de has got two components x and y so that's why we write it d x and d y force has got two components x and y so that's why we write p x and p e y any question and the final matrix is a summation of all these basically values or of all these matrix yes yeah definitely here you can see that force in x direction at point e and force in y direction force in x direction i have nothing force in y direction i have 10 kN, and it is pointing towards the positive y direction so can i say that p e x is zero p e y is 10 then it will give you two equations and then you solve these two equations to work out d x and d e y so simply it will result in two equilibrium equations you multiply this with this one so it will give you 0.76 into d e x minus 0.01 6 into d e y equal to 0 minus 0 0.016 d e x plus 0.236 d e y equal to 10. Yeah, simply you multiply rows of this matrix with displacement vector. This is simply matrix multiplication. Thanks for watching this lecture today. Click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture. Click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics.